Chilling. How's it going? Okay, so you're stressing a little bit about what to talk about. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, I think that there's some general questions to go over, um, but mm -hmm. I think some of the bigger things that I'm looking for are just what my gear progression of my Laura should look like, what I should be doing, mm -hmm. just kind of with the account overall. Um, I've never gotten a character over 250, mm -hmm. so <laughs> it feels like a really big um, kind of leap from 250 to 260. Yeah, I mean uh, it is to an extent, right? You you basically get I don't know how you got to 250, but it's probably one of the burns. I'm guessing. Yeah, Maybe so the last one I have and a finishing it off. I have a few 250s in the account. I think I'm looking at what three now. You'd think I'd remember at this point. <laughs> um, the the Laura's 250, the mechanics 250, and then I'm burning the Demon Slayer 250. Mm -hmm. Um. The Kana, I got to 241. Well, as a farmer, it looks like it. Yeah, it Give was money. the main for a while. <laughs> uh <-huh>. yeah. <laughs> it, it was the main because uh, I wanted Meso. I came to reboot uh, with the cane. Mm -hmm. uh, and then was like, oh, I need Meso. So I went and made a Kana at the time when Kana was like the absolute king for farming Meso. Yeah. Uh, and then... When Laura came out, I don't think it had a burn. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got that thing to 250 in like a month. Mm -hmm. uh, I just absolutely grinded out of the Laura because strong the mobbing well. on it is just so good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then that okay, became I'll, main I'll for a while. Trigger, I'm going to say Laura the whole time and not Laura. Just a heads up, okay? <laughs> I, dude, it, it, who cares? Because <laughs> people say like Laura Croft, and I'm like, dude, it's Laura Croft. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I You can say what you want. Because some people say probably. Kain, and then some people say... I say Kanye, oh, you God. know. It's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then... Uh, Sorry. After after getting uh -huh. uh, the Laura to mm -hmm. 250, I was like, there are clearly other aspects of the account that I need to be working on. So I started working on Legion. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, I mean, you made some good progress there. I mean, over 6K, so... Yeah, I think since taking this photo, I haven't done a lot to the Legion. Mm -hmm. I've gone up a few levels uh, with Wang Shran. Um And uh, like I said, I'm burning the, the Demon Slayer to 250 as a boss mule because uh, it has a two-line attack, one-line boss abso. And then I'm hoping to get the uh, the Wind Archer and the... Sorry, which one? Which one has lit. that? Boss and attack? The, so? the Demon Slayer. Okay. He's currently 240, so I'm going to try to burn him at 250. Yeah, that only seems like he's well on their way, yeah. Um, and then I think that the last thing that I kind of wanted to look at is, like, what am I looking at on this account, or on the, the, the Laura anyway, for mm -hmm. the Hilla and maybe Lu Will, or the other way around, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say, in that order, uh, we could do yeah, that, but right? <laughs> typically, yeah. Okay. Yeah, all right. So what's... Um, okay. Uh, so usually one of my first questions is, how do you... Like, what do you enjoy doing, like, on a daily, weekly basis? What what do you... What is enjoyable about the game, and how do you kind of, like, measure your progress personally? Um, yeah, so I think one of the... The bigger things that I still have as a goal is to get to AK Legion, and uh, I've got the 42 characters in the account, mm -hmm. with a, a decent amount of them being in um, Zach Tech range. Uh, when you say I, 8K, is the 8K a goal, or is the goal I want to make my main character stronger, or I want to be able to play multiple characters and have them funded properly by the Legion? Like, Yes, I think that the, the goal is definitely... Um, the Laura functional passed. supporting legion that any character can <laughs> get stronger. Yes, from. it's right. yeah. It's it's everything supporting uh, yeah. the Laura. Okay. Uh, with the goal being 8K legion to help, you know, mm -hmm. um, get the the additional uh, members assigned to the legion so I can have higher IED uh, crit damage, etc. Yeah. Okay. All right. Gotcha. Um, and then. 
the background so supporting characters being boss mules, of course, which I uh, still need to work on. Mm -hmm. So, and the purpose um, of those is just also at this point mainly just to be able to support financially the Lara in growing past 250. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of it also being more flexible towards if you have a big legion and you have a big income, you can also shift whenever you want to to another character, and then you don't hit like a giant wall kind of thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But it's not right. what you're thinking about right now. You don't have like any other character you're planning on spending considerable amount of times on. Just Demon Slayer is just well, up to 250. Yeah, so mm -hmm. the only other character that I'm spending time on is Demon Slayer of the 250 mm -hmm. right now, anyway. Yep. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a Kali when she comes out. Mm -hmm. Whether I get it to 230 or not is going to be dependent on how, how fast much it is work I have and... at the time. Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I'm vaguely aware that she's going to be very um, Mercedes-esque, uh, and that sure. does sound truly atrocious. Uh, so we'll see. <laughs> It's, it, it seems that so she's predominantly a mobber, and her bossing seems like she's going to get a bit more complicated. Um, but I, um, yeah, I almost feel like a zero light in terms of like training, that once you get down the combo that actually kills quickly, you can just really bring that just dash to one side of the map, dash to the other side of the map. Or some people do two maps, or crazy people even do three maps, uh, that you can kill yeah. everything just by just dashing through. Um so the level part might be the easy part there, but I get what you're saying, you know, like if it levels very quickly, um, there's some overall stuff I don't want to get into just yet, just to kind of keep those in the in the pocket of the topic at the time. Um, but just regarding the overall view, because you also mentioned how much work, uh, that's another factor, right? How are you for your free time? Like how much do you play? How much do you, you know, are you planning the play? Yeah. Um, I, I'm a very... I'm a very seasonal player. Like I'll 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 hop in when there are big events, mm -hmm. um, much like the burnings. I go hard and then burn out really fast, right? right. Uh, That's why I call burning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that getting the uh, in preparation for some of the content coming down the road, at least mm -hmm. getting the Laura to two sixty, mm -hmm. and um, feeling like I can do Lu Will is. Mm -hmm. A big driving factor for me right now oh yeah I did, I did mention that part i don't know if you i guess i didn't uh hear a clear answer to that like the, the milestones like what do you use to kind of like gauge that you're moving forward what are the metrics you look at yeah my, my metrics are definitely what bosses i can be killing mm -hmm. um because to me anyway once you get past like 220 230 mm -hmm. if you're not doing bossing you're probably not really progressing it's really hard to progress through the game without doing bosses at that point mm -hmm. yeah i mean yes and no um you can with like abzo gear um and like let's say you know because you can get that right around that point maybe a little bit before and even with like reinforced gallic stuff from like hard gallics you could get to 275 or 280 by just grinding enough Right, I uh, guess. <laughs> but it, the, the the level of extra effort to put in by taking it out has to be surmounted. So some people, someone who loves grinding and hates bosses can still do it, but someone who likes bossing quite a bit and doesn't like grinding as much will have a horrible time. And I think you're more in that category, right? You want a more healthy balance between the two. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So based on those being your milestones, what is your like? What can you solo up until now? What are you happy with? What are you working on? And what do you kill in a party and how's that going so i've actually never done bossing in party um okay mostly due to uh a fact that you might notice with the character right off the bat is that not i'm in not guild. in the guild yeah yes <laughs> uh there, there is a small history back there uh if you want to open that up but um i'm not in a guild currently mm -hmm. um and i don't with where the account is, I don't really f almost want to be in one, uh, just because of how infrequently I play on the Laura. Mm -hmm. um, so I, do, I what I find is a lot of the time I'll, I'll enter a guild with the Laura and then just do nothing with it. Uh, and now I'm just not contributing to the guild and I feel bad about that. Um, so Well, 
some guilds can be okay with that, right? There are like filler guilds that you can just throw your character in. There's basically no management, but people just to kind of do, it's like a wild west. And you can have, you know, maybe you'll have like anywhere from like 10 to 30 skill, uh, skill points, depending on if people feel like it or not. And people go in and out all the time, but at least there's something there, but there's also no no commitment and no, you know, no no duties from you. So if you don't do anything, it's fine. Like no one's gonna haunt you for it. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, maybe that's just something that I need to go look for then. Well, yeah, it's about yeah, it's about like knowing what you are willing to commit to, and then seeing what you're expecting back from that. And as long, that's why there's different guilds, right? Because different guilds have different things that they offer and different things that they ask. And some might be harder to find than others, but there's a whole lot of guilds. So there's got to be some guild out there that's like welcome, open to anyone, come as you please, go as you please. Uh, if there's any kind of like problems or we get any kind of complaints, you're just automatically out because we have like no vetting system. So, you know, it might be like a low barrier to entry, low, uh, low barrier to entry, low barrier to exit, right? But at least you'll have something there because especially if you're trying to have like bossing mules do serious stuff, I think it's a good idea to build up some kind of rapport with some kind of guild um, and just to contribute for a while to be like, okay, on the management side. Um, because if you can put a boss single or something into a guild, even if it just has like 15 to 20 skill points, which is decently doable if you have just, you know, because you have 10 committed players, everyone has 10 boss singles, that's half a guild already, right? Um, right. If people build out boss mules, you can very quickly fill out a guild. You don't need like a whole active guild to have an active mule guild. You can just have 15 to 20 active members and then that'll be a fully active mule guild that can easily get more than 30 skill points uh, a week. And then you have two skills max. You can either alternate when you're training, you can stack them together for bossing, and then that'll give you a whole lot of um, just base level funding that you don't have to spend money on, which means that's money for your main instead, right? That's the, right, the right. idea behind that there. So it is definitely a very valuable thing to, to look into. So it might take a little bit of networking or just some looking around and just joining a random guild. And it might mean like joining one and getting kicked or whatever, you know, like <laughs> five times in a month or something. But um, for the time you're there, you'll get some benefits uh, out of it for sure. You know? Gotcha. Um, and then I guess to somewhat circle back to the original question. Yeah, for the bossing. Yeah. Currently, currently I am... <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit uh, with um, Lomain. Mm -hmm. Uh probably I, I think it's probably a skill issue, honestly. Okay. Uh I'm at almost twenty K int. Mm -hmm. Uh pretty much everyone that I've talked to says I should probably be able to do um solo domain. Mathematically, and yeah. I'm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I I'm definitely like damage wise, I can tell that I'm there. I can get to pretty much like last mm -hmm. phase, Lotus, uh Lucid. And then I'm getting well into second phase Damien, mm -hmm. um, but I'm dying out. So mm -hmm. it's the way that I look at it uh, is very much in a um, I play a lot of Destiny 2 as well. Mm -hmm. uh, in in that factor, which is that the game gives you the time to do it. If you are dying out, I should probably be utilizing that time a little more effectively. Because the longer that I can stay, the more often I can burst, right? Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. So I, I I think it's probably mostly just a skill issue that I can't get through them, and mm -hmm. I haven't attempted too many times. Okay, when you say not too many times, I mean you've tried like twice, or you tried like ten to fifteen times. Yeah, I'd say probably like four or five times, maybe. Okay. Okay. So a little uh, bit better than ever, twice. Ever, yeah. ever since. Yeah, yeah. Not not quite not quite a you know twenty times. I feel like if I would struggled that. Often, I might just have to drop the game, honestly. <laughs> well, how you know, you know, maybe you should, but how do you know unless you try that many <laughs> times, right? Exactly, um, yeah. But I could give you some tips going into it. Um, so what? one of the things I always say is, you know, the only wasted run is one that you didn't even attempt, right? Uh, sometimes people are too scared to try a boss because they're not sure that they're going to be able to clear it. And then they just w either wait for carries or wait for very strong parties where they're essentially getting carried so that they lower the risk of, quote-unquote, wasting or losing their run. Uh, but then in the process, you end up only doing runs where there's no risk of failure, so you don't know what could make you fail, so you're not actually improving your skills at all. So going in solo, as 
crazy as it is, and you're putting yourself into a situation that's way harder, of course, than it needs to be, quote unquote, because you could be running with a party with people of similar capabilities and then doing it way faster, right? Three people have tripled the damage, you have synergies, so you're probably going to do the damage of about four of yourself if you have three people of the same uh, damage, which means, you know, if you kill it in 20 minutes, uh, pretty long run by yourself, that would mean that it would be like a five minute run with three people, right? So that's uh, why that's way easier to progress that way. But I think it's important to know for yourself what your character can get away with. Um, so there's some basics to bossing. I don't know how deep we need to get when it comes to like visibility, skills, all of that stuff. Have you, do you know what kind of settings you use there? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with that, uh, especially with some of the more um, recent changes to accessibility to bosses, things like your outline. Mm -hmm. um, I won't even lie i uh i spent like probably 300 dollars back when the um invisibility damage skin was in gachapon because i wanted mm -hmm. to be able to see more of the screen mm -hmm. um that said i have no idea how much damage i'm doing per line so that does kind of suck <laughs> uh yeah and to an extent whether you're hitting or not kind of right like do you feel yeah yeah so things like yeah. like uh like if i'm if i'm doing you know vellum mm -hmm. um it's a little hard to tell exactly when he becomes vulnerable in that first phase so that i can hit him with a bind and mm -hmm. i've missed it <laughs> a few times okay. um so i'm trying to find that balance i guess mm -hmm. but i think that you know much like you were saying before it might just be a matter of me needing to spend more time in that environment to know when i need it without needing to see the damage lines yeah, yeah, it could be so, you know, to go like completely to basics, I think a good idea in the beginning when you're entering a boss fight is just to try to walk into the boss fight and just try to live out the timer. Yeah. Um, Like really, really basic stuff just to see like, well, how big are the hitboxes of certain skills? How long after you see them do they actually fire? If there are two attacks at the same time, and they fire around the same time, which one is going to hit first, which one is going to hit later. This is why HMAG is a very good practice tool, because there's so much shit going on, so many different attacks, but everything has a different like delay to it, and things pop up at a different time. And just being able to stand, even in like full blue area, just being able to stand in HMAG and live out the entire timer without dying out is very good tr practicing exercise to practice your mobility, when and how to use your iframe, or in your case, like your reduced incoming damage, right? Your hyper skill, I believe it is. Um, when to use maybe ethereal form, right? For the for the really, really scary stuff. Um, how to use your will skill, maybe, to get like unstunned and get out of certain things, maybe. Um, when to use, uh, well, yeah, so certain mobility, where to, where to stand, how long to stand there, what is the safe spot, what is not a safe spot, how safe is safe, you know, what is it, like a 10% chance of dying, I can probably get out of this, what is like a 90% chance of dying, like I absolutely need to avoid that. That just comes with experience, you know, you can watch someone else in a video kill the boss and like blow it up and it, it doesn't teach you anything if you're not that strong. Or you can watch someone in a different class, use like a whole bunch of mobility and iframes and stuff that you don't have, and then that's cool for them, but you can't apply that to your your character at all, right? So a lot of it will just come down to having, getting the physical feeling and building the muscle memory, learning to react faster. So for, like, um, well, it's, it's still a thing for Lara, I guess for your spirit sprinkle, but like having your attack speed up so your animations are as short as they can be, right? So you can respond as fast as possible. Second thing is like your visibility. So, you know, maybe, T turning uh, turning off the skill transparency completely, right? Um, invisible damage skin if you have it, that kind of stuff. Uh, and then just starting out with just surviving. And then as you, once you can survive, of course, you know, you don't deal damage to the boss, so then you fail the run. But then second step is try to attack the boss, but while applying all the stuff you learned about surviving. So then at that point, you're gonna be probably taking some extra risks and you're gonna end up probably dying out again because even though you're better at surviving, probably gonna survive longer, but the combination of dealing damage and surviving, uh, that's gonna be like give and take, that's gonna be a balancing act. But then eventually, usually after like a run of four or five, you start f seeing some patterns. Um, so one of the things, since you have done some practice, one of the important questions for you to be asking is, what is killing you? What do you die to? Do you have any answer to that? Uh, currently, like Lotus, for example. Of how yeah, I know that with Lotus, um, 
Phase one, I've phase two, phase got... three. Where it's, do you it's die? It's almost always the the very first phase mm -hmm. during um, laser phase the one. Spinning. Yeah. Yes, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, that's where I'll lose like three to four of my lives, and I think what it is is it's just not paying full attention. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of I, I'll, uh, when I do bossing, I'll, I'll usually use her eruptions instead of her absorptions. Yeah. Um, and I've gotten got <laughs> for uh, getting a little too cocky. Like uh, jumping and... to or. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lara phase one, you have to be pretty careful. So one of the things is that Lara, after being in phase one for a while, uh, or, you know, Lotus, after being in phase one for a while, the laser can speed up and everything, right? And that is just horrible. So first of all, if you do die to that, just stay dead as long as possible, wait out the timer, and just wait out that speed up, that hopefully you have to deal with that less. Second thing is if you have the resistance characters, link skill, use that so you're immune for a longer time and you can use it to pass through the laser like an extra one or two times after respawning so you don't have to immediately start jumping around again. Uh, the second thing is to use your reduced incoming damage skill so you can stay on the on the bottom or maybe jump through a double laser. So what I do for example is I jump up through the sides and when the laser is just beneath me I'll flash jump through and then use the reduced incoming damage to shield and then just jump through to the other side basically skipping two lasers. You can do that once every, I don't know, 40 seconds or something. That saves you a lot of travel time. And you can very easily just tank one hit and jump through them. Because you'll just jump through the middle, so you only get a hit once. But you can pass through two. The other thing is, if it's like really fast, you also have your ethereal form that you're probably using for that boss fight. You can die once, probably twice, in phase one laser and be good. But if you're dying more than that, you might as well just exit and just keep going into practice runs to just try to get better at it. Um... One thing I advocate for, and whenever I show it, it's horrible. But one thing I advocate for, for uh, Lotus specifically, is uh, what I call like the early teleport. So if you basically get forced up by the laser, right, on the sides, uh, what will happen a lot of times is that people tend to stay on top until the laser is almost just under you, like barely, barely almost touching you, right? And then they switch to the other side. That's probably what you're doing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. So, with that, there's a heightened risk of you getting stunned right as you're supposed to switch, and then you immediately miss your window. So, one thing I like to do is do what I call, like, the, the earlier transfer. So, with these bombs, by the way, like, you have to kind of, like, walk walk the walk the bombs, right? Uh, well, now I'm too late, I think. Can I go underneath? Yeah, no, now I'm too late. Um, but you can teleport. There's, like, two windows to teleport. So, like, right when the laser passes... Like, you can teleport here as well, and now you're already on the other side. So you don't spend any time up top, like, trying to get stunned by stuff. And with these bombs as well, like, as long as you walk these bombs, like, they don't get they don't get to hit you. Like, if you don't stand in range for the explosion, they don't get to do anything. So you kind of, like, lure them there, and then you switch over. And now you're here, and now you can hit them again from the bottom. Because you want to be on the bottom for as long as possible, because then you're further away from the bombs. They take longer to get to you, so they're most likely not going to do anything. So you like walk into them, walk out again, and then you just let their explosion kind of like be over there. Does that make sense? So I'm, you're not like stuck yeah. and, and stunned up the top. <laughs> like all of these bombs, I'm going to try to get all to explode, but none of them are actually going to do anything to me, right? Because I'm like I walking out, wow. walking back in. So one of them hits me there. But that's just that's just walking, right? That's just regular movement speed. Everyone has that. So it seems I a bit scarier, lie. but I've this... I've almost never seen them live for this long. Uh, as the Laura, the eruptions just take them out generally pretty quickly. Yeah, that's the other thing. Um, you probably don't even have to worry about the robots at all. But even if I have to worry about the robots on top of it, but this is just practice, right? I've killed this boss like four hundred times, so this is not right. something you can do the first time. And that's pretty normal. Also, the laser hasn't sped up yet, which is pretty surprising. Uh, but now I'm inverted. Yeah, see? But, like, you have um, you have robot. Uh, you have the, the eruptions, yeah. And they can just get rid of all of that. So the other thing is uh, the skip. So I will just go here to this side. Try to not have the robot lock you in. Uh, if you have an iframe, just, like, flash jump. And then iframe in the air like that. And then pass through. And then you basically just jump through the middle, and then you can stay on the middle, uh, on the bottom longer. That's where you want to be, because that's where the safest spot is, right? Mm -hmm. 
but you have a flash jump as well. So that's the early the early pass. So consider that as an option. You know, could uh, could help you out. Um, yeah, just yeah. But, but I mean, as an arc, I could just do this. You know, it's like <laughs> it's a little silly, like. Like I don't need the <laughs> I don't need to do any of that, right? So I could just stay on the bottom like that. So every class has its own thing. Lara, sadly, like no true iframes and no only have da inc incoming damage reduction. So you're gonna have to use those when you um yeah, when you have them available. Uh phase two is typically very straightforward. For Lotus? Yeah, and I I I haven't struggled with phase two. Phase three, uh I've gotten gotten by lasers, but I think that it's just needing again to spend a little more time there to okay. recognize when those are spawning do you have the hyper skill to give you knockback immunity while activating veins oh that is a good question let's see because the main thing with lotus is pushes you around right so there's a safe block all the way on the bottom left because if he pushes you you don't get pushed off so you just get pushed further into the corner so you don't fall off the laser so if there's a left block that's always a safe one but if it's any other block and Lotus is nearby, um, I guess I can show that a little bit as well. Uh, but essentially, the uh, the mechanics for how you get pushed from both normal and uh, for both phase two and base, phase three are the same. I have nothing set to this character, so even on normal, this might take a second. So I do actually have that hyper skill, and I wasn't aware that I had that. Hmm. Uh, so just knowing that yeah. in general might actually be helpful. So there's like th there's well there's like four things you could do, but we can see if we can lure out a laser here. Um, so this is one thing, right? Like he pushes like that. He'll push as soon as he's in range. So if I stay on the edge of his range and then just walk out like that, he doesn't hit me. See? So it's it's about like visually kind of like knowing what his range is, or just walking around him, back and forth. He's got platforms here. Oh, he's gonna push. Okay, this is a safe one. Like I can always stand here, even if I get hit by stuff, even if he pushes me on this, I'll never fall off here on the left. So that's a safe one to go to if you have to go to anything. Well, now I fell because the platform disappeared right when he pushed, right? <laughs> uh, the other thing is like staying on top of him is, is typically very safe. In phase two, he doesn't have touch damage. So it'll just be around like just walking around him like this. And that'll be like part of your first trial, right? Of just like trying to survive. Because then you can see like, oh, how fast is his attack? Which are what are his other attacks? When does he push? Right? Then you can try with like being on the front. You have your up jump. It's a little different for you, but you, so you have your up jump. You can also try this. You could try to lure out the attack and then just stay on it. That means that there's nothing really happening there. He like he can't hit you at all, right? I'm just moving back and forth. I'm not doing anything crazy. It's just about the timing. It's about knowing how long does it take to hit you. What is his wind up for his attack? What is his range? I'm gonna get hit, I already knew that, because he attacked the other way somehow. <laughs> Eyes in the back of his skull, this guy. Uh, so there's a few things you can do with that platform. So what I did is like walk back and forth. That's if he's not right on top of you on the platform. Then you can just walk back and forth, bait out the attack, stay on his close side of the platform, walk to the far side of the platform, and then you can make sure that he doesn't actually hit you on the platform. The other thing is you can jump up, uh, which of course, you know, if there's stuff falling from the sky, that's not an option anymore. But as long as there's not stuff falling, that is an option. There are several ways that you can jump over his attack. You can actually be on this platform here, I think. Well, I got stunned there, so that doesn't help. But you can also just jump over the attack if you jump at the right time. Obviously, I didn't right there. But there is uh, there is the ability of just jumping. You don't have to go that high. Like, his hitbox isn't that high. Um, but yeah, the up jump helps. And then, of course, you have the iframe. And then if there's nothing else, you can create a vein with the Lara, like with the... Um, that purple dragon vein, right? And then you can activate it as he's pushing you and then you will have your knockback resistance. So like with, I use this skill, for example, uh, and then, you know, he hits me, but he doesn't knock me anywhere because that gives me knockdown immunity. Let's see if I can just jump over here. Whoop, yeah, there you go. Like even if I'm in range, you can jump over that attack, but that's that's a little bit more of a narrow timing window. Also with the laser, so when he um, when he spawns the platforms, you know the lasers are coming. And then typically you can see another indicator on top of him that he is about to 
activate the laser. Usually he's walking and you can see him jitter just a little bit, like he pauses his animation and then does it again. So here I'm looking at him very closely, I know there's no laser coming. Boom, that was his extra jitter, you saw that? Like he started walking and then stopped again and then walked again. That's when you know he activated the laser, because sometimes he'll use one or two extra patterns in between. Sometimes he'll do it immediately. That's also how you can tell, like... But again, like when you're moving around and not attacking, you have way more time to look at the boss. And you, know, you can have the outlines on and everything. So you can look at the boss more closely. You can see how does he attack, like how quickly does he attack. Now the laser's coming. And that's another option, right? Because you have a flash jump. You can also jump off the platform and then jump back on it. If you are cornered, you can do like something like that, right? Where you jump off and then jump back. But again, that that takes practice to to get like confident in that. And that's going to take eating shit a few times, you know, and <laughs> just absolutely dying to it. But after a while, you'll just your muscle memory will know exactly when to jump, how far to jump, how high to jump. And then if you do get hit, it's per exception and not by rule. And then you'll figure it out. So now that the laser is already coming pretty quickly. I'll just here. Right, and it gives you way more calmness as well to set up your burst and because it's a bunch of buttons and you want to make sure you set it up right and then you want to make sure that you can commit that damage and it's very important for Lara, right? So you're probably going to be using your burst in phase one, probably once as well in phase two, maybe once in phase two, the three minute, right? Um, and I imagine once in phase one just to get out and then in phase two, just kind of weed it out with constant damage and then use it in the beginning of phase three and then probably one more time in phase three, I'm guessing something like that. So you'll end up with something like a eight minute run, maybe up to nine minutes for a third burst, something like that. But for, yeah. I know it looks different when I do it, I guess. <laughs> oh, did you mute yourself again? Hello? I've been muted this whole time. Of course yeah. I did. I thought there was um, so little interaction. Yeah, yeah go for it. Right. <laughs> oh, God, that's my bad. Uh, uh, yeah, no, that was really cool. It was definitely a lot uh, to learn. Yeah, it's subtle but, um, like that, right? Because it's, it's hundreds of hours. Of, well, maybe, I don't know how many, but like probably yeah, dozens to hundreds of hours of practice in there and of all bossing, of course. So I guess that uh, with with bossing being said, mm -hmm. where do you think I should be progressing gear? Because as it is, it's a little cursed. <laughs> well, so I want to, um, yeah, okay. So we'll, we'll we'll close up the chapter on on bossing for now, like on the on the details of the bossing. Because if you say you're dying out in Will, uh, sorry, in Damien. Maybe you should talk about that a little bit because Damien mechanically typically is easier than uh, Lara because there's there's more predictable uh, patterns there, and you have ten lives, so that that one for surviving should be easier. But then typically it's harder to kill because he's in the air a lot and you can't really reach him. So you're more likely to time out on Damien, more likely to die out on on Lotus. When I what I'm finding with Damien is just that. Uh, I I think it <laughs> I think it's I I understand a lot of his mechanics a lot better, mm -hmm. but because kind of like you mentioned, he's he's a little bit slower in a sense, mm -hmm. and he's a little harder for Laura to hit because I pretty much only use um, the eruptions. I'm mm -hmm. getting a lot more uh, desperate to hit the damage, and that's causing me to die more often. mm Hmm. So does the sword kill you sometimes? Do you get your seven stacks sometimes? Do you get double swords? Uh, yeah, I've I've gotten double swords. Like I said, I've only done it a few times. So, mm -hmm. um, where I'm dying has been kind of changing. Uh, but okay, yeah, that's normal. You yeah, die to everything. I'm getting, I'm, <laughs> right, right, yeah. I've gotten double swords. I think almost only ever once. Okay. Yeah, the cleansing is the. It's really much more about patience, like you said. Like it's about finding a good spot, finding a good pattern. So typically, right, uh, I'd let him just kind of like run free until he does like the Cheetos in the air, right? The yellow balls, um, and then just run to the opposite corner. Um, 
So two main things is one is like attacking and binding and bursting all that that has to be done well. But do that right after he does the yellow things in the air, right? Because that's when he's, he's in the air the longest. Um, and you know when he's gonna when he's done with that, he'll land right underneath, like inside of them. So if he once he's done that, that skill is on cooldown for a little bit. So bursting after that would be the best idea. And the second thing is you wanna all you wanna get a good feeling for like the cadence of the sword. Like how many times does it bounce around? Like I can't tell you it bounces around three times or something. Like I don't know that number. But I don't know exactly when the sword is about to come down and hit me. So even when I know that time is coming, because it's just like programmed into me, I'm already moving towards the corner of the map. And as soon as you see that crosshair, you know the sword is going to be landing on you. And then you just jump out of it towards the middle of the map. But try to always get the sword in the corner. That way it covers the least amount of surface. It's the least likely to overlap with Damien himself. And it's the least likely, it's actually 0% likely to overlap with a cleanse ever. Because the cleanse never spawns directly in the corner. It only spawns in like the middle 80% of the map or something. Right? You've never seen a, a, like a cleansing altar like slammed into the corner of the map for Damien. Well... You haven't in your four runs, so that doesn't mean anything, but I haven't in my thousands of runs, so th that's just right. not possible. Yeah, so it's always going to be somewhere like relatively in the middle of the map. So that means it gives you more opportunity to cleanse. It gives you more opportunity to fight the boss without having to deal with the sword. Um, and it might feel in the beginning like you're just sitting in the corner endlessly while you're waiting and feeling for that rhythm of like, does it come directly? Does it land directly on me? Is it bouncing up and down three times? But th the thing is, when you're cleansing and you're going for the stacks, you get you think like, oh, I can get seven stacks. That's a lot. Uh, but then every time you get hit, you get an extra stack, so it goes a lot faster. And if that means that there's only going to be like three or four sword landings every time you need to cleanse, otherwise you're going to die. And during those, some of them overlap with the cleanse. That means you only have like a window of like once or twice where you where you can actually, <clears throat> sorry, where you can actually cleanse. And if you don't take those one or two which might be at two stacks or might be at three or at four when you think it's not necessary yet, then maybe by the time you can actually get to seven, it's like, I didn't have any chance anymore. So I would like, fuck, I should have cleansed at three, right? Um, so taking in the beginning, like t just taking all the cleanses that you can get when you're just focusing on surviving. So you want to survive on being in a corner when the sword lands, uh, f getting a feel for the cadence of the sword and being able to interpret every pattern of the boss so what I call like the blind approach um, for a lot of bosses is killer. So like for Seaval punishes you a lot for that. Like so going out of the vision of the boss and then jumping back in, that gets you killed a lot of the times, right? Stray fireballs, tails, rocks to stun you. Um, for H Mag a little bit less, but for Damien as well, like you could be like, oh I don't see him, I'll just jump in, and then he lands on you, pushes you back into a sword, you die. So try to keep vision of the boss at all times, so you can see the pattern, so you can see what attack he's doing where he might be landing, how long the patterns are, and how much wiggle room you have. That's, uh, that's where I would start for Damien. Gotcha. Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely something that I've been also trying to work on, which is like keeping up the chase, because, yeah, as you mentioned, when they're off screen, they're significantly more lethal. Mm -hmm. And then when they are, when they do get off screen, that just off, uh, off screen, that means you just have to wait off screen as well, until you see them like do they crash like for Damon does he crash down do you see one of those yellow balls then you know he's in the air so then you can approach again more safely you know within distance and then you know what he's doing um or do you see an altar on the other corner well then go cleanse right use your time <laughs> if you don't see the sword flying around and you don't see what Damon is doing but there's a cleanse you know that's not in the direction that you know he is then go for the cleanse then at least you're using your your time for something right uh, for phase two, of course, because you're so burst reliant, it's going to be very important to get the blue balls uh, completely on the other side of where he goes. He has the tendency, after certain patterns, to reset back to the left side of the map, like very much the left side. He favors that one uh, way more than going anywhere else. So, in general, it's a good idea to try to lure the balls over to the right side. And then even if he does like a few patterns, he's in the air for a little bit. As soon as you get the balls all the way to the right side, go over to the left and um, and then just wait for him to show up there and then do your bind and burst on top of him, especially in the in the beginning stages. The balls are very slow and very small, so it'll take them a long time to get to you. And you might be able to finish even your whole animation for your big fifth job skill before the balls ever get back to where you are. 
but it, it just gets harder and harder as the balls get bigger and there's more blue balls in phase two and that's actually where your explo your eruptions are very good because you can just put the, the eruptions i put them all on the left side and then just slowly walk over to the right side have the balls follow you but not overlap with you and that way your eruptions just keep doing full damage regardless of what will is trying to, uh will what, what damien is trying to do over there on the left side you don't even need to see him like he's going to take constant damage from the eruptions and then as soon as you see something like a slash at the side or you see those red balls the flaming hot cheetos in phase two then you know it's going to be safe to move over to the left again and to uh and to do some do some damage and then you know a bind and burst and try to commit that full damage sometimes even if you have like your really big burst skill and it's about to hit and there's a blue ball on top of you try up jumping and jumping over it it's a it's not a damage loss that you're not uh if you're not hitting with sprinkle it's a damage loss if your big damaging skill doesn't get to commit its full damage because when you're in the blue damage uh, blue zone it only deals 10 percent right so sometimes it's also a better idea to just jump away from the boss that'll actually make you do more damage than actually attacking the boss so that's a little bit of contradiction in phase two but again gotcha. practice yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely need to spend more time mm -hmm. yeah and if you have invisible damage skin you might not see that you hit the 10 percent versus hitting the 100 percent uh, but you can now at least keep a, uh, keep an eye on this uh, EXP percentage, uh, sorry, HP percentage, right? You can kind of see, after a while, you see like, okay, if I hit this skill, that's supposed to do like 2% or something, and now I hit it, and it did like, you know, less than 1%. Nothing. Fuck, yeah. I was probably in the blue <laughs> yeah. area there, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay, but that's, yeah, for Lotus and Damien specifically, but yeah, it's practice, practice, focus on surviving. Then try to find a balance between getting hit, hitting, and um, and the bossing, and then just gradually get better. And then once you, if you do get to the point like, well, I can solo yet, or I can solo it so easily now, I want to do the hard bosses. Then you find another party member who's in the same situation as you. They can't really solo it, but they have practice with normal, and they get better at it. And then party together and fuck them up, you know. Yeah. Um, all right, the second part I wanted to get into, because I think that's going to be very important for you, is a general foundation of how, well, like, where does damage come from? How does it, um, how does it compare to, how do the sources of damage compare to each other? And as a result, like, how, what do you want to prioritize in when allocating, uh, when you need to allocate, right? Not just like, oh, ability points, everything goes into intellect. There's no discussion there. Like, you, we don't need to talk about that at all. But it's like hyperstat points, legion grid, link skills, um, all of that. Like, where does damage come from and how can you apply that uh, to your account? So, yeah, definitely. Uh, to which extent are you familiar with my commands and my resources? Uh, let's just assume I know none of them. Okay, um, so one of the uh, bigger ones, the two big ones I think that I have that I think are very useful is the progression one and the dailies one. So we're looking at the progression one now on stream. Um, this basically tries to track kind of what you want your metrics to roughly be so that you're not horribly behind. But the other thing is also so that you have a healthy balance between where you spend your time and as a result, your meso, you know, because meso is reducible to time and reboot, right? Um, so to kind of keep track, this is going to get updated definitely with new age because of, you know, hyper burns and then hyper burns up to 260. Uh, yeah, late game is definitely not going to be, uh, end game is not going to start at 270, right? It's more like uh, mid game is probably going to start at 260, <laughs> uh, 261 now or something, right? Because of the burn. Uh, they're definitely very much so pushing people through those earlier levels way faster. Um, so it's going to be a bit harder to see how I'm going to do this. It might be more metric based on like how strong do you need to be for certain bosses and kind of group them like that. Maybe, um, level will be a hard, yeah. Cause the, the ranges will be crazy, right? But we got one through 260 and then like 260 through 665, 265 to 275 and then 275 plus or something, right? It'll be it'll be very different because like you feel already now like 250 is one thing but i'm past 250 is a whole other kind of worms um right so essentially these are the uh the metrics you want to aim towards so the idea behind these metrics is how expensive is it to get to these points what are the other sources of damage that you have access to so opportunity cost basically right efficiency one dollar spent or one one million meso spent here versus a million spent there versus the time it takes to make a million spent on something else how does it 
e even out. So the total amount of uh, access you have to certain stats, how they compare to each other, how they stack uh, with each other possibly, and how much time they take. That's all taken into account in this, uh, in this grid. And another resource I have uh, goes into hyperstats and then basically talks about the priorities you want to allocate your hyperstats on your character. But that has caked in as well to a certain extent is like where does damage come from? Uh, like what is the priority of these stats? And why would you want to prioritize these stats in this manner? And that again circles back to the progression grid as well. And like what is the access to these stats? How do they compare to each other? How do they empower each other? And in which situations do you do you need them? Because the, th the main thing is like w getting up to 250, you know, it's it's really just rolling your face on your keyboard and eventually you get there, right? But then transferring that over into damage on bosses, one thing is of course there's a skill issue, right? You have to learn the bosses and learn what they do. But the other thing is also like how do you make it so that all of the stuff you've worked on so hard and you, you put so many hours in, how can you translate that and apply that onto your character to make your character do more damage. Yeah, definitely. So can't confirm rolled face. Yeah. So you, you play the other games, right? So the main the main players, the main really important stats are critical rate and ID. ID when you're bossing, of course, right? When you're mobbing ID is not important. And what you'll feel more, especially once you pass two fifty, is that you'll start having to build your specific setups. So for hyper stats, for link skills, for um, for Legion Grid, you'll have like a mobbing setup and a bossing setup. Have you kind of start working on that, on splitting those up? Yeah, I definitely need to start doing that. Because mm -hmm. like I said in the beginning, it doesn't really matter where you allocate everything. You just go up to level 10. You can just like dump things in your Legion Grid. Lara is very strong. Like everything just dies and there's no real problem there, right? But Correct. the monsters get stronger. The bosses get stronger. They don't fuck around. And if you don't have specific setups for everything, you'll just um, not be performing at like your your peak efficiency. Um, even though you've already put in the time, you're not getting the value back out of it. Oh, there's a sneeze coming out. I'm sorry. <coughs> yeah, there we go. I was thinking that was gonna last like two minutes. Um. So one is definitely like you know what are my equips? What is my next path? And where do I spend the money? But overarching, I would say m having a good understanding of like where does damage come from and which sources of damage am I aiming for um, will give you a much clearer picture of because then you can use that and, ca and, and use calculators to see how much is this going to cost and you'll d immediately be able to see one to one. Okay, I can get, you know, X result from this item for 50 mil, but I can get 2x result from this other item also for 50 mil. So I'm going to prioritize that second one over that first one, right? Depending on depending on my budget. And I think right. that understanding doesn't come from just looking at a calculator and trying to have someone tell you, oh, you need to use this event. I think that understanding comes from where does damage come from? How do sources of damage interact with each other and how do they compare to each other in terms of accessibility? So crit rate. Very important. Why? It gives you access to critical damage. Why is that important? Because critical damage is a limited resource in this game. And we pretty much want all of the critical damage that we can get. Why? Because of how it compares to the other sources of damage. It's not an ironclad rule, right? If you were to play in a different server where your pass reboot passive of final damage is instead of passive of 500% critical damage, then we wouldn't want any critical damage. We want critical rate, but we wouldn't want critical damage. Why? Because it's an additive source. So stacking on more critical damage would have very little impact on our damage, right? I don't know how, in what sense, how are you on maths and everything like that? Very good on maths, yes. Yeah, so you understand the difference between additive, multiplicative, that kind of stuff. Of course. Percentages, percentage points, the difference is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those are very important, right? Because like for EXP... Some coupons say they double your EXP. They don't actually double. They give you plus 100%, which is, you know, if you already have 1,000, that's 10%. That's not 100%, right? Right. That's 100% points. These things can be very confusing if you are... Because there's so much stuff in Maple that's very old. And some stuff is self-evident if you've been playing the whole time, like myself. Um, and if you're kind of, you know, in and out every now and then, some things change intermittently. And then 
it can be good to just double check because just because the item says something it doesn't mean that's how it works like a WAP for example says it gives you 20% meso drop rate but it actually gives you which, which you would imply uh, reads as 20% points meso drop rate but it actually gives you 20% like actual percent so multiplicative meso obtained instead so it's not even it's like somewhat close to what it's saying that it's doing but it's not even that so you just have to know those things <laughs> Sadly. Right. Um, right. Yeah. So that's all taken into account here. So if you look at these metrics and to take it a, to go a little bit back to what you were saying earlier, when people are saying like, oh, you're near 20K stat, you should be able to do the boss. Yes and no. So one thing is just, you know, skill, practice, mechanical, all that, you know, not having a laggy ass computer and shitty peripherals. But the second thing is your, your stat being the predictive factor, right? The lower your any kind of metric is, the worse of a predictor it is to your overall performance. Because I can give you an account of someone with like 8.5k legion and who knows exactly how the boss works and you can give him a 5k five st five stat character and he might be able to kill Lotus and Damien. Or I can give you the, uh, someone who's just completely new, has one character on their account, has just hyper burned to 250 and has gotten bad advice and has worked on all their potentials first and gotten everything to legendary with 12 stars and has somehow rolled themselves into like 30k stat with no weapon attack, right? And weapon attack is another metric that, that's come out now with Savior. And they might be 30k stat. Um, I mean, technically, I could build you someone with 50k stat who wouldn't be able to kill Lotus and Damien, maybe because they just don't have enough IED, right? IED is basically armor pen. Do you know how IED works? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So if you don't have the IED, your damage doesn't go through. So you can... A new character, they might just think they're fucking up. And they're just hitting once and maybe the game is just broken or they're bugged or something. If you just don't know that part of the game, then no one, none of your damage goes through, right? So wide uh, variance in terms of stat. I will say stat is probably one of the better indicators, but I wouldn't start looking at stat until you're like at 35 to 40k or something. Because then you can kind of think like, okay, person who gets that far probably has a decent understanding of the balance and where does damage come from. So that stat becomes more predictive. Um, all of that to say... Looking at this, do you see any things where you're like way off or things that don't make any sense or stats that you see where you're just not sure what they even mean? I'm pretty far off on my, my arcanes. I definitely need to start picking up dailies for sure. Um, my... well, arc arcanes <laughs> is just as, uh, you mean arcane power, right? Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I am very much aware that my uh, functional crit rate is probably too high i think i'm sitting at something along the lines of like 130 ish percent uh and i need to reallocate my legion grid because of that mm -hmm. um and then because now you have comparative advantage there right like removing that from the grid doesn't lower your damage at all but moving it somewhere else increases it directly right right exactly so is this set up um, when you're mobbing or or do you just have one? <laughs> yeah, this is set up two, so I'm asking, yeah. This is this is the only setup I have right now, yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, preset one has nothing in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think currently uh, working on IED mm -hmm. would you do probably have, be big for me. Yeah, you do have decently decent IED, I thought I saw, right? You're like in the, in the 90s, though? Oh, I'm... <laughs> I'm looking at my character in game right now, and I forgot mm -hmm. that I don't have uh, any of my link skill set. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm looking at like eighty four percent. Right. I see here ninety one point two nine. That might be with the uh, the That's last event. Stuff, yeah. Was it with the last event buff as well? Did you have some ID in there? That's gone now. Uh, the oh, momentary yeah, buff carried now, over. Huh? Yes. Yeah, so that's gone. Now. Yeah, I don't have it anymore. Mm hmm. Yeah, so yeah, you, you probably uh, and you had you had like a thirty percent in that or what? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah, because then you might be down to like eighty seven. It couldn't have been that high because I, I definitely wasn't playing much during that event, so okay, it, it okay. was probably pretty small. Okay, okay. So maybe you're still at like ninety ninety percent. Yeah. Um. Well, you have one line of ID now, which I think is good, right? Once you. Unless you have the full superior Gallic set and you have like the full Legion set blocked, I think 
every single class should probably have at least one line of id on a wse why because it's really easy to roll and second because it'll give you more damage than anything else will at that point so even though it looks ugly like it's not end game uh to get your work your way up to like the late game and end game it's insanely good it just adds so much damage plus monsters are typically so weak that you don't need full damage lines to be able to keep mobbing so there's no there's no you know downside there um if we're specifically going into id well i'd i'd want to look at you uh look with you at the at the legion board because so i'm looking at specifically like link skills uh legion board and hyper stats right so as a priority for all of these they're all interconnected so the top priority number one is you want to get your so when you know this is kind of like two presets this goes for all three of those things right so one is for my i guess i don't know if i can like zoom in a little bit uh i, have, I must have this file somewhere as well hang on did i did i just upload it uh, no i didn't um but basically make two presets, right? So I have the purple, Are you? do you have any color blindness or does this all stand out? No. Okay. So I have the blue here for specific, only for bossing, the red one only for mobbing, and then purple, of course, for the combination. So the general priority is very, very similar. You're basically going to be exchanging ID with bonus EXP and exchanging boss damage and normal monsters. These are pretty much mutually exclusive. ID doesn't apply to regular monsters or it does, but they have so little PDR that it doesn't really come into any factor. Damage to normal monsters and damage to boss monsters is mutually exclusive because a monster is either a normal or a boss monster. It can within that have distinctions between being a regular monster, a star force monster, an arcane power monster, a sacred power monster, right? Uh, but those are typically map effects rather than monster effects. Uh, and then bonus EXP, of course, you want to get EXP from regular monsters and then bosses give fuck all. So that is a death stat there. So that's why those are there mutually exclusive. And everything else is the same priority. What does priority mean? It doesn't mean you have to max it out and then move on to the next one. It means you have to get it to a right metric and then move on to the next one. Where I can find a metric, you can find a metric here, right? Metrics are here and like what numbers are you aiming for? So this is your, right. your, your values and these are your norms <laughs> essentially, right? Um, so DFTF, PP, Mana, if you have a class that gets like extra currency, like extra mana to be able to use skills, this is something that you need to know for yourself. Like I can't play my character without some points in it. That's the most important thing. Second, Arcane Power. Why? It doesn't even make my range go up or my stat go up because it gives you final damage multiplier on monsters where it's necessary. You need to look at it, right? Can you get it? Can you get extra bonus for the Black Mage? Can you get some more to deal bonus damage to Vihela? then that will be more impactful than pretty much anyone else that comes after it. Very closely followed by ID when you're bossing. So that's the second one to look for. And again, for ID, we're looking for these numbers for functional ID, right? So you have to look at your character, you have to read your character skills, maybe look at your party composition if you're fighting with a, uh, with a set, of par uh, set of people. If the party has a lot of ID debuffs with the boss, that means you can technically go a little bit lower, you don't have to go so crazy but you always want to have in mind what is that what is that number then critical rate because like i said gives access to the critical damage right um this is only capped for some people where they start looking at that some classes get way more critical damage than others but those classes know spoiler it's not you so <laughs> you don't have to worry about it uh and then damage to regular and normal monsters so that uh, comes right after that. Why does it come before damage? Because it's 4% per level versus 3%. And damage to bosses or damage to normal monsters just gets added together with damage percentage. Gets added with your base 100% damage that you have already. That's your, your standard. If you have no multipliers, you still have 100% damage, quote unquote. Uh, that's important to know for the calculations, right? So if you're adding 5% damage, you're not adding 5%. Well, you're essentially adding 5% final damage, but if you already have... Uh, 5% because you have 100, right? You go from 100 to 105, so that's 5% of the total you already have. So that's essentially the same as 5% final damage. But once you already have sources, some are additive, some are multiplicative, so then the balance starts shifting completely. But say that you had no bonuses whatsoever in your account, whether you added 1% weapon attack or 1% final damage or 1% damage or 1% stat, that would all give you the same amount of damage increase. Because it's just one of the piles of final damage that is being increased by 1%, which means the whole thing just increases by 1%. But because some are additive, some are multiplicative, and some have more access than others, that's when the differences start coming. 
Right. Uh, and then you have leftovers, and this is just essentially once you know for sure that you're not. So this is for hyperstats specifically, but it's also for the Legion board and kind of for link skills. Is that once you don't have access to these anymore, or they don't really matter anymore in terms of utility, you, then you can just throw leftover points in this order um, to, you know, maybe you need a little bit more survivability in your link skills. Maybe you want a little bit more uh, utility out of your um, Legion grid. Maybe. Um, a little bit of buff duration or something, I don't know, something like that, or, um, but mainly for Legion Grid, that's only over like 10k or something because there's pretty good value in all of the things that you have access to. Uh, what's the other one? Hyperstats. For hyperstats, it's just like a little bit of min maxing and damage. Ideally, for the hyperstats, you don't want to go all the way down to zero because then every single time you level up, you get more points. You might have to take points out and reset your whole thing just to get gain one level in these stat priorities instead. So it's okay to leave some leftover points in hyperstat and then just wait until you have enough to get another, you know, big level up. But it's very normal in the beginning to get two hyperstats like this. Uh, well, not exactly like this, but to kind of get like to 10 at everything because 10 to 11 is so expensive. But if you redid this, you could probably get some 10s, 11s, maybe even a 12 in like the important stats here in the middle. And then the intellect would just go down a bit and the magic uh, weapon attack, arcane power would go down a bit. Um as long as you don't need the arcane power, right? The intellect doesn't multiply with percentage stat, so this one doesn't scale as well. So typically, you know, you can level it up to like four or five, but typically not past that because the points pass four or five. Those could go back into these stats instead and have more efficiency on, on what you're doing. So that's the general priority for the stats. So if you try to apply that now to your hyper stats, oh yeah, and it has a little bit of a thing like, you know, go to level five first, then to go level eight first, level nine first. But in general, I think if you have intellect attack power, like past level five, then it's probably, or I wouldn't go past level five, basically. I just level them up to five and then just save all your points and then dump them into the things in the middle. So yeah, in this sense, this would be like a bossing setup, but you still have to redo this one because you can't have attack power be a 10 and intellect be a 10 and your boss damage be at five. That's just never going to be good because boss damage is right. Gives you so much more damage and it's four percent per level uh past a certain point as well so these levels in here will give you like 10 to 20 percent damage boss damage and again you have 100 base and 85 here and boss so this together is like 210 plus the base so it's like 310 but you add 15 percent more damage when you have 310 that's roughly 120th that's five percent of your final damage how much does you know 15 attack give you when you have 600 that's 140th so that's two and a half percent final damage very very quick basic math probably not 100 percent accurate but that's kind of how you want to look at those stats All right intellect this one gotcha. gives you 300 you have 20k 300 is 170th that's 1.5 percent final damage really really rough estimate but that's how you can kind of like compare how much of your total damage is this amount what is going to affect you more um right. and then the legion grid is probably where you can make the the most gains so you probably just want to strip this whole thing um, so again, same priorities here. The main thing in the beginning is you max out your magic attack and your intellect, and that's all great. But then once you get access to the outer grids, you want to start maxing those out first. Those become top priority. And once you have maxed out there, what is useful, then you can go back to the middle and start leveling up there. So main priority again here would be if you're bossing, right, would be the IED until it's high enough, critical weight to 100, max out the critical damage, and then leftovers into boss damage. That would be the priority for... Uh, your legion grid i don't know if you know about the legion solver if you use that do, yeah yeah i don't know yeah. if you like the puzzle i like the puzzle uh but generally you just start with the the green archer pieces and just lay them right down through the middle so you can connect the outsides and then you just fill up the sides uh essentially is how i do it but uh yeah you can i mean if you're that high on crit yeah you can take that all out uh probably move it into ied uh and then that being an ied might help you no, that's probably that's probably the, the solid foundation. The other thing, uh, so like if you have um, the Superior Gallic set completed, which I don't think you have yet, right? I do not. No. no. Once you have that, that basically gives you the green light to re-roll your emblem, right? Because then you have 30 coming in, 35 going out, no big loss there. And then the emblem can go way harder on attack and then end up working harder for your character, essentially. Gotcha. 
Uh, and yeah, all the I Legion mean, you grow from here will basically just go further into the boss damage and try to max out that stat. Right. Uh, and then when you're doing regular monsters, so then the priority is kind of the same, but IED is essentially switched out with, uh, with bonus EXP. But like I show here, it does shift down because you want to make sure you can kill the monsters first. Once you can kill them, then you want to min-max within killing them, right? Getting more EXP, getting more drops. Same thing with, with your equips, right? You want to get strong enough to kill them. And then if you can kill them, then you can introduce mezzo obtain gear, drop rate gear, and get more stuff from them while you're maintaining the kill speed. It doesn't make any sense to reduce your kill speed to increase the utility from each kill, because that's never going to be efficient. It's only going to be efficient once you maintain your kill speed. So the priority here would be pr a combination of like getting your critical rate up to 100, maxing out your critical damage, and then going into normal monster damage, if you need that. If you don't need that, you can go directly into bonus EXP, right? But if you do need that, normal monster damage, and then if you have a lot left over, go into bonus EXP. So your Legion setups might look something, well, not quite this big, but Legion setups will look something like this. So for mobbing, I have this one. So enough crit to hit 100, critical damage full, and then normal monster damage and bonus EXP are full, and then I also have enough to you know, fill out my main attack and my uh, my main stat. And then for the third one, you always want to go through deck. I mean, it's, it's really min-maxi, but like, for example, here, you're going through MP. Like, you want that to be luck instead, right? Because MP is not going to do shit for you, but luck is your secondary stat, so that'll give you some damage. So always try to get as much out of those points as you, as you can. Make them work for you. Uh, and then the bossing setup I have is this one. So, uh, different priority, right? Enough crit rate, uh, critical damage. I don't go straight through the middle. Again, because I have this lab piece, and the lab piece has a hinge, which allows me to take a hinge out of one grid here, uh, out of a dead stat, and instead let it go through buff duration, which is something that at least does something, so it's like very min-maxi. Uh, and here I just built West Texas. Um, but, it, in, yeah, the, the general priority, right? Crit, critical damage, ID, boss damage, that's all max for me, and then... I go through the middle with the mid stats. And then I basically go extra into critical rate in case I go on a character that has slightly more critical rate needs, it's still maxed out. And then, yeah, if you get bigger, this one it prioritizes int legion characters, and this one prioritizes more strength and dex ones. So if I play a mage, I check this one instead, so I have more uh, passive int here. But that's more min maxi. And then this one is for buff duration, so, you know, explorer. Explore mages for me only right now. Uh, buff duration can take priority over some other stuff because, like for Infinity, that gives you final damage as well. So at that point, buff duration. Uh, this one is only for hyper sets, right? But buff duration would be then at the same level. Uh, it probably would be like right here with critical damage, IED, like in this bunch. Right, because Infinity is something crazy, like 40% damage or something. It's just massive, yeah. And then the longer one lasts, the longer the other one lasts, and it's just, it's, uh, you can almost get, like, full coverage of that, so it's just massive, massive damage. But it could also be the case that I don't know, don't know exactly how it works, and that's where battle analysis can come in, right? You can try with a different setup, try to be like, do I need this much IED, or can I move this over? Is this link skill better, or this one, this link skill better? You could do a battle analysis, right? Have you ever done dojo, fog forest, any of that? I have not. So if you clear up to floor 30 of dojo one time, you get access to the fog forest training grounds. And there you can set up a dummy with a whole bunch of different medics. You can set the level, the amount of PDR, the size, which because that can uh, matter for some certain skills. And you can do, have you ever done a battle analysis before? Yes. So you could just do BA, wail on it for a while, use the same skills twice, and just see if there's any kind of difference in how much damage you're putting out. Because sometimes it can be really hard to tell. You know, let's say you roll a secondary with like two lines of boss and one line of IED or something. You're like, okay, it's shit for my range because there's no attack or magic attack on there, but it could be really good in some bosses. And then you have another secondary that's like one line of damage, one line of stat, one line of attack, like what is going to be better for bossing? That's really hard to tell, right? There's so many variables there. So sometimes it could just be a matter of, I'm just going into the fog forest, I'm just, you know, putting up a dummy, same metrics, two BAs, and I'm just seeing if it's different between these two secondaries. If there's no significant difference, then just recube whatever you want. But there, if there is a significant difference, or like, mm, I can see that this one is definitely favoring 
bosses of like 300% PDR and more, which is essentially what you're looking for, right? That's Lotus Damien and everything above. Then be like, okay, I'm going to keep this one. If this one also allows me to kill monsters near my level properly, then this one can be my multi-purpose secondary and I could just reroll the other one. So that's how you can kind of use that as a measuring tool to see what you want to do. But that's already going to give you way more value from your Legion than what you're having right now because you've worked so hard at leveling all these characters, but by not putting them in the right spot, your main character is not as strong as it could be. So that critical damage is going to make a huge difference, right? Because I think right now, what do you have, like 60, 60% or something? 62.5%, right? And that's basically final damage on crits. So your base critical damage, if you hover over your stat window, I believe is something like 20 to 50%. Yeah, 20 to 50, right? So 35% final damage on crits on average without having any critical damage. So if you add 60 to that, you're around 100%. So your crits are hitting around double what you usually would. But you still have like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right? So you can go from doing 100% bonus damage to 111% bonus damage. So that would be 10% final damage on all your crits, which if you have 100% critical uh, rate is basically 10% final damage in just this little block here. Right. And that, hopefully that all helps you contextualize way better on like where, you know, it's, it's great to work on the mechanics and it's great to work on your equips, but if you don't have that foundation in hyperstats in the right priority, legion grid in the right priority, link skills in the right priority, you're gonna to have to upgrade way harder and make way bigger gains and make way more mesos and take way more chances maybe even that you don't wanna to take to make sure that equips pick up the slack, very negative word, but make up the difference of not applying this stuff in an efficient way. And it's just gonna make your progress feel slower because it actually will be. <laughs> you're just gonna to have to spend like way more money to get the same results if you don't have this applied properly. Gotcha, yeah, okay. So if I were to tell you now, like, can you redo the Legion and can you redo your hyper stats with like the resources I've showed and what we talked about, do you feel like you could do that right now or do you have questions on that? No, definitely. Um, let me pull it up really quick, actually. Where is... Yo, Teddy Bear, thank you for the raid, bro. Just uh, helping a viewer out here with a, well, a customer, I should say, with uh, his progression in the game. Okay, yeah, give me a minute. I can, I can do that. I think that um, one of the last things that I, I kind of briefly touched on, and I, I guess I just don't have a lot of context for, is what does going from 250 to 260 look like? Is it just me going to, uh, you know, Labyrinth and, and rolling face for the next 10 levels, or, or are there any things that I should be kind of doing before then? Um... Well, you want to make sure that your... So your damage... All the way up to 260, your damage is probably not going to need to improve much much at all. Because you're probably just nuking everything, I'm imagining. Um, even if your stuff isn't set properly. But again, like for the for the mobbing setup, you'll make that own setup as well. And your mobbing will get stronger as well, right? Both will get stronger. And, you know, whenever you're doing mobbing, whenever you're doing bossing, you'll just switch... Switch the Legion board, switch the hyper stats, switch the link skills. You can make the link skill presets as well, right? So it's like click, click, click. And then suddenly you're just, boom, you're in the other mode. What I have is a checklist that works for me. <laughs> uh, it basically like, okay, check all of these things, uh, depending on how hard you're trying to, you know, <laughs> how hard you're trying to go. If you make sure that you have like all the right potions on you, that you check your Legion, because it just sucks when you did like an hour of training, you're like, oh, this should have been better. And then you check your Legion and then it's like it's still in the bossing mode, right? That's the downside of optimizing <laughs> is that you do need to switch that every time. Otherwise, you're you're also going to be missing out on a little bit more if you don't switch. So you're, you are kind of forcing yourself to do that. Um, 
But yeah, like I said, the main thing is you're going to, it's going to be putting in the hours, um, getting access to as much damage, uh, sorry, EXP augmentation is probably going to take priority over needing to worry about damage too much. Because like I said, like up to 260, even in Labyrinth, even in uh, Limina to an extent, the one thing that's probably going to hold you back a little bit is the arcane power. So I imagine that hyperstat arcane power for a mobbing is probably still going to be pretty high so that you can maintain killing speed. Um, but the main thing, oh, we'd have to look at the equips a little bit, but the main thing will probably just be um, the Arcane Power on one end, and on the other end, we'll just be putting in enough hours and getting your EXP multipliers. So you have a decent amount of Legion coins, so that's good. You're doing like Saturday, Sunday Monster Park. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the other thing is Dojo. Dojo is pretty good for extra EXP coupons. If you want to be able to buy them, you can buy up to five hours of e double EXP from there. If you're trying to scale up, and it also has a very cheap spirit pendant that you can buy there once a week. You can buy three day spirit pendant, and if you time that out because the shop resets every week, uh, if you time that out with the spirit pendant, right now we have event spirit pendants, right? So it's not as important. But if you time that out with the spirit pendants from the daily gift, you can actually get full monthly coverage with a pendant, except for maybe two days, right? So you can start with one, two, three from Dojo. Then use this one up until day 10. Then do one, through two, three for dojo again. Wait one day, one, two, three, dojo again. Then use this one again, day, eight, day 18, all the way to day 23, dojo again, one, two, three. Uh, and then depending on where the week falls, because it never falls exactly with that, you're probably in the next week again here, so you can buy another one from dojo. And you only have like a few days at most that you don't have a spirit pendant on you. So that could be a matter of, you know, when you're AFK, load up the computer first, you know, equip the pendant go take a shower go eat come back it's already an hour in you can um you can have the extra exp right training in the right spots looking for burn maps finding a map that works for you again here the battle analysis comes in very handily usually you can try to like you know try different rotations on different maps try different styles because you can do the jump and sprinkle you can just do the eruption whatever you feel like doing and certain maps will you know will just fit be a better fit for you and certain maps won't be but it's mainly just like grinding it out. Yeah, there's uh once you get to 260, there's more, you know, there's a symbol dailies, there's Monster Park Extreme, there's a lot more stuff. Um, the, don't underestimate the dailies in the areas where you're at now though, like the Moonbridge, uh, Labyrinth dailies, Limina dailies, like those will give a decent chunk of EXP as well at your level. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely not doing dailies as often as I should be. So mm -hmm. I haven't even looked at how much EXP they do give. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're very much, and with New Age especially, they're, they're very much uh, shifting towards daily story in the sense of not trying to make people feel like they need to be grinding four hours a day to get to a certain level, but just like within an hour or less, do those dailies, and those will give high efficiency, big chunks of EXP, and you can still make steady progress even by just playing like anywhere from like half an hour to an hour a day. You can, if you do that even off season, they're basically trying to keep people out of that cycle, right? Of just like paying seasonally. And then every time you come back, you're just playing huge catch up and then you can barely catch up and then you stop playing again. And then when you come back, you're like 10, 15 levels behind everyone again, because everyone was grinding it out. They want to make it more even and also try to keep people throughout the year. Because if you can log in every day for like half an hour and it's not really infecting, uh, affecting your, your day to day too much, they can get more playtime out of you. Plus, you can see a lot of progress over a long period of time. So that's what—that's definitely the shift that they're that they're making with New Age, extremely so. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm definitely excited to get to 260. Mm -hmm. I haven't touched the Laura basically since I made it because I've just been hard focused on on Legion. So coming back. Um, I want to be prepped for some of the newer content coming down the mm -hmm, road. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six job will be nuts. Um, don't have all the details yet, of course, and it's still test be for a few more weeks, three more weeks, I think. So a lot can still change, but it's looking like it's going to be pretty extreme, like six minute cooldowns, one minute party cooldown, because otherwise it would be too crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah, giant uh, cinematics, uh, whole map blowing up kind of thing. So. Uh, yeah, as soon as that comes around, that'll be really satisfying, I think, to be able to capitalize on that super quickly, yeah. Um, okay, so when it comes to building out the Legion grid, what to do with Legion, Hyperstats, Link skills, do you have any questions on, on those topics? 
left? I, I think I have a general idea on, on Lynx. Mm -hmm. um, I pretty clearly don't have some of the more... Um, what are the words I'm looking for? Proper Lynx Like uh, Arc, for example? But, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, oh, what level is my Arc? It's low. Mm -hmm. It's. I mean, it's just an amazing Lynx skill. The, the great thing is just the uptime, right? The condition for it to activate is is be doing something like okay <laughs> i could do that you know so that for both mobbing and bossing it's just free damage god where even is my arc <laughs> somewhere way down i guess if you didn't level it right the shortest name might be too low level to even oh, show you up know what I, I don't. I don't think Do you I have, have one. an arc. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't think it. I have one. Uh oh, my oh, check. No. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? That works because I just got the um. Hyper burning. The the mega burning. The mega burning. So yeah, sorry. I can, That's what I mean. Yeah, I can. I can. I can burn an arc then. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, I don't. <laughs> it's free. It's free real estate, dude. Yeah. Well, you're perfect. getting at the point. I was point. wondering what I was going to use that thing with. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Problem that we didn't even mention already solved. Clean. Um, but yeah, yeah. Links as, far as, as far as links go, mm -hmm. I, I think that I have a, I have a pretty good idea of, um, like I said, where I should be putting link skills. Yeah, some are just some link skills are just great early on, and then they become kind of expensive for how little they give back. So you're probably just gonna be transitioning out of some of those. Like, so again, like if you have more than enough crit, the Phantom Instinct probably has to go. Crit is the only thing it does. If you have so much, even after taking out of your Legion, that's probably more important, right? Because then if you compare it to fifteen percent to something else, now it's a very valuable link skill. But if you have enough crit without it. And without in your, um, like the cheapest way to get crit is your hyper stats, right? Because like up to, especially once you're past 250, like up to level eight or something in the hyper stats is very, very cheap. So you probably prioritize that one. If that gives you enough crit, then you don't need to set any hyper stats or any legion grid, then you can keep that open. But, you know, if your 12th link skill basically does nothing for you, gives you like a little bit of stat, that's it. Uh, and then you can do crit in there instead, and that can give you lower on the hyper stats, then that might be a better option, right? So you're constantly just puzzling between those three things because they all give around the same types of stats. So you're always trying to balance between those three. And it might, you know, in the in the beginning, you're just piling all of the link skills that you have. But if I'm looking at these link skills, a few of these are very expensive. Like Bravado, if you're bossing, is pretty expensive because it only gives you 10% IED, right? And the higher you go, the, the singular, smaller sources tend to lose a little bit of efficiency. Um, and then for damage, it only gives you damage on the first hit. So for mobbing, it can be good, but only if you're one-shotting with it. Um, the keen edge is just flat stat and flat attack, which um, we, can get to, uh, we can get into it, but if you're familiar with like flames and the flame score, does, do those things kind of make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. Then you can basically, you know, there's some stats that just only give you attack and stat. You can just throw that into a flame score calculator and just kind of see how that compares to each other right whether you want the fire blessing the sickness blessing the keen edge right those you can then compare apples to apples with that but that is typically a little bit of an expensive one same thing with the pirate blessing tidal battle only when you're moving and again rin's blessing is a pretty expensive one as well because it's only 10 percent ied so if you have the lumi for example the lumi goes 10 15 20 percent that one would be a way more valuable link skill if you're bossing because the 20% is better than two individual sources of 10%. So just the level three Lumi would replace the Rin's Blessing and the Bravado, and then some, and leave you with an extra spot. So if you're trying to boss, that would be way more valuable bossing Link skill. Okay. Yeah, I should work on that Lumi. Yeah, and just, you know, getting everything to 120 and then up to 140, um, that could be a very solid foundation. And then if you want to work th towards 8k, it's typically a good idea to just kind of like start back uh, from the list, right? You got the links command. Uh, basically to start back from the top of the list and kind of just like work your way down again. Probably prioritizing a little bit more like the critical damage, damage to monsters, uh, damage while mobbing, EXP, like those. 
and then just round out the rest and just grind out to 200. If you like the character, train to 200. If you don't like it, bonk it, burn it, whatever you need to do, just get it there, you know? <laughs> and that might be like more of a test of patience. You're just looking for events, you're looking for potions like that. But in terms of like general Legion progress, as long as every character is in like a bucket of, I'm either gonna train this one, I'm either gonna bonk this one, or I'm either gonna burn this one, in order of, you know, how much you like it. As long as they're in a bucket, then you're good. You know, you don't have to do it right now. You just know what you're looking for when the next event comes out. It's like, oh, is there an opportunity to bonk something? All right, this one's top of the list. Is there going to be good EXP? Maybe I'll train this one then. Is there some kind of burn? This one's top on, of that list. You know, as long as all of them have a plan of getting to 200 or close to it, then 8K will just happen. Right. Yeah, I'm currently bonking my Wind Archer. I want to get it to 210. Mm-hmm. For then Bossing Mule, or...? Yeah, yeah for okay. Bossing Mule. Mm -hmm. And then after that, the other two Bossing Mules, my uh, my Marksman, my Blade Master. And do you have a target for your, coup your EXP coupons? What do you mean? In the current event, we have... If you're daily capping, you get EXP coupons as well. Uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty much only using them on my, uh, having a stroke. <laughs> I was like, did he mute himself or is this, no. is he building suspense here? <laughs> brain, brain, no function. Yeah. Uh, my demon's layer. Cause I want to get it to 250. Right. Okay. I will. Um, yeah. So there's a little grid. I don't know where I have it, but it does, they do lose efficiency when you go higher quite a bit um oh god where do i have it i don't remember EXP but, coupons well the these right so if you look at the screen these are the ones i'm talking about oh the exp points yes, yes. I'm, I'm using them on the uh the wind archer okay yes that's fine yeah i would use it on it's 200 let's get them to 210 yeah four right now i think okay yes that's perfect all right yeah Coupons, yeah, XP points, yeah. They're <laughs> the terminology in this game plus the translation over. They had to <laughs> rename EXP potions like four times because they kept getting giving them the same name and everything. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, with link skills, basically, if you're if you're kind of like deciding, I don't know what link skills to use. You can use this, the Legion links, and so the all the link skills here are the the clear. Uh, the clear grids and then the green ones are the legion bonuses. So if you're just looking link skill, just determine first what am I going to do mobbing or bossing? Okay, you're doing mobbing. Cool. Start from the top left and then basically look for these metrics again, right? Okay, I want to get my crit rate to 100%. How can I get the crit rate to 100%? Oh, I just need one. Cool. I'm done. Next thing. Critical damage. Take out everything you can get. Okay. Damage to all monsters. Oh, I'm bossing. So I want damage to all monsters. Damage while mobbing. I don't want those. EXP. I don't want those because I'm bossing. All right, now we get into the blue area, and the blue area is bossing. So I'm probably going to take most of these, right? So you want to make sure, uh, okay, damage while bossing here, beast tamer. Oh, I probably want that one. Uh, Night lord, thieves. Yeah, probably want that one. Uh, less like immunity to death chance. Uh, if I need extra utility, right? If I'm practicing the bosses, I want to survive more. Maybe I'll take this one, just so I don't like, instantly get destroyed by everything. ID only if you need it. Uh, zero as well, only if you need it. ID, extra immunity to life, right? The resistance link skill, so I can stay immune longer when I'm respawning. Very useful to walk towards bosses that might otherwise kill you, like C Val, H Mag, maybe Will, everything to never send beyond. Um, and then you get into the IED and the and the boss percentages, and now you're probably maxed out by the time you get here. Maybe you can add the Cygnus, right, for a little bit of uh, resistance to stun and a little bit of attack. But you, then you're probably done. So depending on the function, you just start from the top left. And then with the metrics in mind, work your way to the bottom. That's how you select your links. And if you find a link skill here that would be high on the list and you don't have it yet, that might mean it's a good idea to put it less slightly higher on the priority list of what gets leveled next, what gets bonked next, basically. Okay, that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Definitely have to go through this. Yeah, I just organized all the stats at first. And then I was like, well, wait a minute. If I just prioritize them in the row as well, like, and then by column, then essentially you just get like a priority list. And I was like, okay, I'll just like filter, 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 filter. And then this kind of just came out and I was like, oh, that's actually, 
it's like a guide in itself. It's not just an information sheet, right? It's also kind of just like an order guide, which is, oh, why does it have so many lines? Oh, this is wonderful. This needs to be adjusted, but okay. <laughs> I'll need to delete some rows down here. I think I could just do like delete and then it just reselects for itself, right? There's probably gonna be like a shift down. Well, okay, I can do this later. Um, yes, link skills, legion, hyperstats, feels better? Okay, yes, yeah? definitely. Matrix, any questions? That I think, no. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that there's anything I should be doing with my matrix? Um, do, 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 do. I don't know what the decent speed infusion situation now is with Lara exactly. I think you still benefited from Sprinkle. Yeah, before it was definitely better, uh, but now that they've changed mages to no longer have the effect of... Oh god, brain Attack function, speed? no good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I think that you're probably right. I probably could get rid of it. I think that doing a BA with it on and off might be uh, worth mm -hmm. looking into. Well, you, you don't have it here now, but I think you might want to get it because... It still affects your casting speed, just not your weapon attack. It's really, it's really stupid on how they do all of it. But I believe for Spirit Sprinkle, and I don't know if any other skills, probably no other skills, but only for Spirit Sprinkle, it still affects your attack speed. Um, or sorry, your casting speed, I should say, because it's not an attack, but it's a, ca a magic spell, whatever. Um, so I would say try to, well, if you're going to be bossing, the Urda Shower doesn't do anything, right? Or Urda Fountain doesn't do anything. So that one would go anyway. Um, and otherwise, Blessing is like one of the lower impactful ones because it's just small uh, flat magic attack and a little bit of stat uh, compared to all the other things just doing doing way more. But there's not too many other things that would be useful for you. If you're getting into the higher bosses, you want to look into things like Blink for survivability, right? Jumping up, staying in the air, um, staying above danger, stuff like that. And the uh, Urda's Will skill to be able to prevent stuns, prevent blinds, prevent any kind of hard CC or cleanse out of it in case of situations where you would otherwise die because you don't have your uh, other iframe. And then the other skill in areas where you need your survivability would be your ethereal form. I don't know if you have those skills, but I would definitely keep those and start leveling those if you get them. Uh, yeah, I don't have those skills. Mm -hmm. um, I should actually wasn't even aware of. Uh... Yeah, those would, would definitely take priority here. I think over the the goddess blessing and the and, and the, the the shower slash fountain. Um, for mobbing, this makes sense. But for bossing, those two, and then maybe the decent holy symbol, right? Because it'll just come on in the end if you want to open the box. But those three slots, I would probably. Uh, consider like switching for the for those other three I just mentioned to give you more utility in bossing and then you know finding a key for them and then maybe finding out it's the wrong key for them and but you need to develop a little bit of muscle memory like when do I use blink you know do I stay in the air you can stay in the air and get hit by falling debris and stay in the air and not fall down like a brick for example which gives you more air time which may can allow you to hang above the laser the full duration sometimes if you jump at the right time without even having having any platform for example you just up jump, blink, make yourself float up, and then by the time you fall back down, you'll just fall into non-laser ground as well. So the, it gives you just so many more outs to to not be dead, but you'll have to just practice with the timing. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. I think that that's just about it then. Mm -hmm. You do you feel confident about what to do with the equips? I definitely feel like uh, I have a lot of homework. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot to go do. Yeah, because when I'm looking at the familiars, for example, right, you look at your outs, like ID is huge value early on for familiars. It's easy to get. You can even get it on common familiars. So I would just reveal common familiars until you get at least two, maybe three, 15% ID ones. And you can use that as a buffer as well to see, hey, do I have enough ID with this? And with my... Uh, my newfound IED from my Legion Grid. Maybe now you already have enough IED if you were to roll away your emblem 
and then if you roll away your emblem, you might roll way more magic attack, and that'll be good damage for mobbing and bossing as well for the future. So, depending on where you're at there, that might also be already enough to put you over the edge of not even needing your superior Golux set yet. So for familiars, right. I definitely look at that. Um, yeah, you're, you're familiar with like the upgrade path in general, and we've got Shining coming on. I guess I'll just ask you, like with Shining coming, where do you plan to, to spend your money? I haven't thought about it yet. I have no idea. That's kind of one of the... Uh, mm. mm -hmm. Well, you got a little bit more than two weeks. How much money do you roughly make in a week? Mm, I can usually make around two bill in a week. Mm -hmm. How much do you have now? Uh, I'm sitting on about one bill. Okay. One and a half, I think. So you have at least five. Um... Okay, I'll try to aim. So, if you do, do you do Ursus uh, Maple Tour? Do you do those daily? No, I probably should though. Because that's one bill a week. If you do the just those two, two free Maple Tour runs and three Ursus runs a day. If you do that every day, then that's one bill a week already. Right. So you add your boss crystals to that. You add potential bossing mules to that. Even if bossing mules only make like half a bill a week, your main character should probably because. Uh, you're doing slime, slime boss. No, I'm not doing slime. Mm -hmm. You're doing CPAP. I'm not doing CPAP. Okay, because if you do Lotus, Damien, slime, CPAP, those things within your level, and again with the extra practice, if you get into a guild, guild skills, right? Getting your ID, you're doing your Legion. Those your hyper stats, you will get way more damage. You'll probably do double your damage or more. Um, if I had to guess, um, then applying that more properly with practice hands is like another <laughs> double final damage compared to what you're doing now. You're going to be breezing through these bosses very quickly. So your main character is going to make like 1.4 bill or something a week just by itself. If you have two, you have three bossing mules that can probably make more than half a mil a week each. So I see three, four. So I'd see at least four without grinding per week that should be within range pretty quickly. So I think by shining, you can get closer to 10 bill. Okay. I think that would be, be nice. Yeah, well, yeah, that'd be nice, but that would take you know some practice on the bosses and some more diligence on, on, on making progress there. But I think that will also, if you spend 10 bill in shining, it's, it's almost like getting 20 bill worth of gains, right? So you also want to see the money that you make now in the time before shining, that money's basically going to double up because of that event. So you're getting like a 2x final multiplier on everything you make. Because it's not like, you know, there's no real big chance that you're not going to make gains. It's all going to be like guaranteed gains, right? Because where your equips are. Like in my situation, yeah, double the chance, but, you know, <laughs> I might need to spend 200 bill on something. And it, the rounding error might go up to like 250 or down to 150. It might be like 100 bill mar uh, er margin of error there, right? But for you, that's way, way, way smaller because it's all just on the on the lower level of uh of risk right and now that they've changed starring too it mm -hmm. should be pretty easy to get yeah at least somewhere 15 16. yeah so i would aim for shining to try to get everything that's not six everything that can go okay only get things to 15 that you can get past 15 right that's rule number one and if there's a 5 10 15 get to 16 as long as you have money, try to get everything to 16, and then you can start safeguarding, trying 16 to 17 if you have money left over, but get those confirmed gains first, right? Those are the most efficient. So get everything to 16 that's not 17 yet. So that means your gloves, your shoulder, your cape, your uh, your ring. Don't do the enraged succum belt, right? Because you can't transfer hammer that into superior, so we don't want to push harder on that one because they're the same level. So don't push harder on this one. Um, CRA pieces, um, yeah, here's the ring. Got yeah, these two rings, right? Kind of treasure and superior Golux. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight items. If you can get 10 bill, then we 1.25 bill per equip. That should be more than enough, uh, to, to get them all to 17, but get them in 16 all first and safeguard that last star. See if you can get them all to 17. We still have to safeguard to 16, don't you? No, like because 5, 10, 15 gives you a 100% chance of success. Oh, he's big brain. Yeah, at 10, at 5, at 10, and at 15. So 
You don't even have to safeguard there. You only have to safeguard that very last one. So get all the 16s, super free, no chance to boom. Only chance to boom past 16 during that event. So only have to safeguard that last one. Gotcha. So okay. in terms of stat, stat is going to be decent, but it's mainly if you're going to look at your current stat window, uh, the total amount of magic attack you have now, 1556, that's going to go up a lot in, in percentage. And your range is going to go up. Uh, but your stat is not going to up. And again, someone who says they're 20k stat, but they have, let's say, like 20 star gear with like epic potentials, they can have the same stat as someone who has 12 star gear with legendary potential. But that first person is way stronger because they have way more attack. Right. Yeah. So that's going to happen to you. Like your stat is probably not going to change all that much unless you then also dedicate some money to your potentials. I would say for the potentials, I think. But maybe not. But I think with the extra ID from your Legion and from your... If you get the familiar ID, you're probably going to be fine to reroll your emblem for more magic attack there. So I would aim for just two lines of magic attack. That would be like the first thing on the list after your... Uh, um, after the star forcing. Because you could go, you could push harder on star forcing. But I think you get way more efficiency out of the cubing after that if you just make those gains plus you won't have insane amounts of money so for emblem i would aim for two lines of magic attack and for the secondary as well um but before Probably that two line magic attack yeah just both two line magic attack uh but if you get any other outs so like let's say that you roll like um yeah actually the emblem is not terrible like this but you just have too much ied um but yeah like a line of magic like a line of boss would also be good but also be better because again you probably still could be able to kill the monsters that you can but you'll be stronger on bosses which is ultimately it's never a bad thing right you just blow those things up a little bit faster but your flame is good on your weapon your potential is good on your weapon you don't want to do anything with that uh then after that the next thing uh you have drop in mezzo set right how are I... you on that don't have a drop in meso set. Uh, mm. As you can see, I have, I oh, have that's all. drop. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's all I've got. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, because if you are going to be pushing past again, like damage is not really a, an importance for mobbing, but you do want to make those gains in terms of familiars, in terms of getting droplets, in terms of getting nodes still right to fund yourself and your other characters. So. I guess I'll scratch the part of the emblem and the secondary and stuff for now and work on the drop in Mesogear first after the shining. That's probably going to be the okay. most important to get, again, to get more utility out of your of your grinding. But you're already setting up yourself for um, quite well for bossing. So I'm okay with you kind of skipping. So for most people, I would say work on drop in Mesogear now first, but because shining is so close and you can make such great gains in star forcing and you're already getting the ball rolling on your income with bossing wheels, that means that there's not as much pressure on needing to drop a Mesogear gear immediately on this character. So I would do them slightly out of order because of that. Uh, but yeah, so look for which accessories can give you drop uh, or meso obtain. You know which accessories give that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if it just has one line, like the condensed power crystal, that's cute. Roll over that and get some drop a meso. That's a that's that's going to be the priority. If it's already legendary, that's an even cheaper access to drop or mess. That's that's fine. So for that, you can use exclamation mark drop rate. I have my all caps on for some reason. Uh, this talks about like which uh, you know which accessories, what percentages are you looking for, and which order are you looking for them. How does it stack with the familiars? What percentages do the familiars mean? What kind of situation can you get to? What kind of percentages are you looking for in total? Right. This has all of all, all of that information. Mezzo bags. Okay. Yeah. What is mezzo drop rate? What is item drop rate? What is mezzo obtain? How do those differentiate? Um, that's all there. So use that resource to check which accessories do you want to let rank up. Again, if it's already legendary, but it only has one line, cool. That means you're going to be drop or mezzo gear. <laughs> if it ends up rolling like 24 or plus intellect, probably keep that and then make a new piece for drop or mezzo gear, right? We don't want to, you know, get too crazy on just throwing every single good thing away just for the sake of uh yeah and even the superior golox ring because until you have the full superior set the golox pieces individually are kind of trash the belt is good because it has crazy base stats but the other pieces are just they're just another accessory there just to give you drop or meso gear once you have the full set then you can start shifting away and going into full damage gear 
but then you'll probably have some other pieces as well that are also shifting away and then those can just be re-rolled to fill the gaps in what you need and drop in mezzo so they'll just they'll complement each other again later gotcha you just okay. want to avoid having like you know 14 legendary rings in your inventory because this one was slightly stronger than that one and that one was slightly stronger than this one and then eventually you're just legendarying everything and because you know the point of it is to make money and if you're spending extra on extra tearing up you're cutting into that directly so that's not a good idea right uh cup is fine that's fine temporary heart but i try to get the fairy heart before the end of the event you have all the way until the end of august i know it's four bill it seems like an insane amount of money right now but to get those bosses up get those boss meals up maple tour ursus daily um yeah the money's gonna come a flow in uh, and you have many, many weeks until the end of the event. So I would set four bill aside after the Shining. Definitely make sure you, that you get that heart because that's a lot of free damage later on. Might not feel like right now you can capitalize on that, but you'll be able to capitalize on that before the next uh, heart becomes available. Uh, this can be right. drop a okay. meso. This we're just star forcing. Flame is fine, flame is fine, flame is very fine. Potential is more than fine, right? This is a great potential. Maybe the top can be a bit better, but the potentials are great. You know, just basically these things need to go to 21 or 22 stars before you redo that potential, you know, like in, in terms of like access. So like general steps is like get stuff to 17, get the legendary potentials in order. So drop Meso Gear, WSE, and then probably Glove for critical damage. That's probably gonna be the general order. Then you get full superior set, then you phase out of boss accessory, phase in boss, uh, the superior set for damage. Accessory set is exclusively then for drop and meso gear. Um, maybe fill in with other boss pieces, I'm talking about like Twilight Mark, Dominator Pendant, that kind of stuff, or with the Sweet Water stuff, if you wanna do that. Whichever one you feel more secure with, whichever one you have more access to. If you're not in a guild, you're not doing party bossing, probably better to do the Sweet Water stuff, that's more guaranteed. The other stuff is more RNG and you have to get the runs. If you're running with randos, you have to, you know, deal with people maybe yoinking stuff. You have to deal with, flat, uh, you know, blinking for things and getting RNG lucky on that. That's another thing to think about. Um, then the next step is probably to Star Force again. Uh, CRA up to 19, then CRA up to 21. Then hopefully with all the bossing you've been doing, you've been gathering up father, equi father equips. Fodder equips go to 21 into 20 star superior and perhaps uh, and then at the same time you're starting to switch from Abzo into Arcanes. Then basically everything goes up to 21, Arcanes go up to 19, CRA goes up to 22 and then it's crazy cubing basically. Just cr everything, everything just hard like accessories go to three line, all the other stuff goes to two and a half line, everything goes to legendary and then you know you just wait for backups again and then you tap stuff to 22. That's kind of the the whole spiel. But during that, you know, dailies, nodes, sacred symbols, arcane power, all of those things have to keep up. Otherwise, those other things are gonna have to push way harder. There's gonna be way more pressure on your flames and on your potentials and on your star force if the other stats aren't following, or if your legion grid is, you know, selecting for 40 extra critical rate that you don't need. Right, then that is going to put so much extra pressure on the other things. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So it's yeah, exciting. Get ready to press eruption a lot and get to 260. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a lot of that. But yeah, you'll be ready for six job. You're ready for Cernium. Ready for Monster Park Extreme. It's going to be a lot of yeah. But yeah, check check into those dailies, the Moonbridge and the Labyrinth ones, and then the Limina one once you have access to it. Um, you get the little uh, flames of determination or whatever the fuck they're called. They're not that important because you're going to get those from Gloom and Dark now once you do those. And then those combined with the Vihela drop will make you the key for the Black Mage. You'll get more than enough of those resources so you don't have to worry about it for that. But I would look at it into it for the EXP. And once you feel that normal Lotus and Damien are just like a breeze. Uh, and definitely look into Slime, right? Slime has a three minute... Uh, timer rotation and you're a big three minute burster so it's really good for you as well if you do the test properly you know, look into the boss mechanics but if you look, do the test properly she's 
uh, slime is stunned for a bit and takes extra final damage. So then you get to use your big burst and it's just gonna just gonna blow up. You're gonna kill it very easily. It's a nice crystal. You might get access to a ring. The ring will set bonus with the twilight mark once you get to Lotus. Uh, once you get to Lucid and Will, and then that set bonus will be pretty nice. So if you get those pieces, you can you know kind of kind of skip the skip jump the upgrade step there. Uh, over Commercy a little bit, but Commercy is still good because you can get backups, right? So you can more reliably go to 17, go to 19, go even to 21 stars, whereas the other piece is very rare to get, even more rare to get a bunch of them <laughs> to get backups. So it's not going to be as reliable to get to high star force. That's kind of the thing that you want to decide for you. Do you already have enough dailies on your plate? Can you add that? Or for the long term, do you think it would make sense for how you play the game? Right. Yeah, I, I definitely um, I need to prioritize more time into dailies for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. even in the moment, I mean, the weeklies definitely now are, should be great priority, right? Because that's like no time, but that's only once a week. But that's no time for all of the crystals now that they assemble, uh, sorry, that they change those for Arcana. So 100% do those. When it comes to the dailies, yeah. I mean, the, the first few areas, since you have all of them unlocked, there's a lot skipped, right? So... It's like one daily, boom, 16 symbols. Yeah, I think that where I'm at, it's like one daily for uh, Choo Choo. I think it's still two for VJ, right? For some weird reason. Um, I think Finishing Journey should go down to one as well, because it starts with five. So five, four, three, two, one, as soon as you unlock Morass, I think. Um, maybe there's a quest you haven't clicked yet. Check the, check the light bulb and see if there's any, like, skip something with a number next to it, skip four, skip three, whatever. Make sure you click all of those or go to the NPCs and just check if they have any extra options because it might just have been something that you haven't clicked yet that just uh, slipped through the cracks uh, somehow. But it should be one uh, for you since you have unlocked Moonbridge and Labyrinth. It should be one. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm checking right now and it's, it, it is one. So. For pretty much all of them, right? Like Morass is probably even one. Maybe Asphara is two. Minus, minus one. Because it starts with. What is Morass? Morass starts with three. It might be one for all of them at this point, yeah. Level 250 is all one, yeah, exactly. So once you have all the pre quests done, all of the. for all the areas, they should all be. they should all be down to one, yeah. So, yeah, in terms of total time, um, that's just so efficient, you know, the amount of symbols weeklies and dailies yeah that'll and it's stat you know it's extra stat and it's final damage on the monsters and if you want to make sure that you don't get too much pressure on your equips in limina and still be able to kill relatively easy there and be able to kill with drop and mesogear the arcane power is just paramount yeah i'm going through them and yeah they are all one i was mm -hmm. not aware of that i thought it was like one two and then going up but i guess that yeah when you hit 250 they all drop yep they all drop yeah yeah it's a little weird because when you get to sell us that doesn't that one doesn't count so it doesn't skip anything so it takes a little bit longer it takes it takes to get to moonbridge before you get a skip on on a sphere an extra skip on morass uh but yeah i would say do those um so again uh maybe if you haven't seen that one because you said <laughs> But let's say that I haven't seen anything. Basically, this is the dailies command. Uh, maybe check this one out as well. This is not what you need to do, but this is what I like uh, around different levels advise to at least look into and see if you need it. So if you're 250, you can basically just you know check this column and just just look at all the look at all the blue <laughs> uh, and see which one they are. So it first starts with Maple Tour, right? Monster Park, Rudibus. You might not have to do any more. Uh, oh, whoops. But Press the wrong button. Uh, normal hilla. No, no, no. Ursus for money, all right? Commercy, we talked about that. Maybe do. Skippity skip. These are all bullshit. Normal Magnus, only if you're going for uh, magnificent double S souls, right? You can do that. Not necessary. Legion Dailies, I would do those. Dojo, maybe, right? If you want to practice, if you want the coins, if you want the extra spare pendants, and maybe the extra EXP coupons, consider it. Skippity skippity skip. Nobody cares. Uh, normal Cygnus, uh, oh yeah, normal Cygnus weekly for Mezzo, right? Normal Arc for Dominators and for Primal Essences to craft rings maybe later. Super important. 
uh, is a daily though, so maybe not, maybe don't do it every day, but try to do that whenever you can. Very fast boss, so very small amount of time. Uh, weeklies, weeklies, weeklies. Um, choo -choo PQ. I mean, yeah, you have to do these honestly until you're maxed, of course. Weeklies, 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 weeklies. And then level wise, you end up weeklies, weeklies, dailies, weeklies, <laughs> right? This is all the same shit. Just dailies, weeklies, dailies, weeklies. Uh, and then here you get the slime, and um, and then you start getting into uh, into lucid. But hopefully by your level now you're starting to get into the hard bosses, right? But again, this will probably shift a little bit because the thing is that with uh, the thing is with leveling now, leveling is definitely a lot faster than it was at some point. So level might have to get crunched a little bit. Uh, more forward, but the general order of things will stay roughly the same. Okay. This is also really helpful. Mm hmm Yeah, so that might be the other thing, right? Just kind of like going through the commands. Uh, you can check exclamation mark, commands. There's like 220 of them. Uh, I color-coded them because some of them are jokes as well, like the orange ones you can probably just skip. Uh, but like the green ones are all like game info. And the yellow ones are like general info, stream related stuff. Yeah, so mostly the green stuff is probably what you're looking for here. Uh, some of these might be a little bit outdated, but again, they will always be in internally consistent with each other. Um, so if there's any, you know, ever a question on a topic or something, you can always start there and then it'll just start your journey into figuring out what's going on. Maybe you'll see contradicting things. Maybe you'll hear something else from someone, but then you at least have something to start from. And it's not just all, I don't fucking know what to do here. Kind of, kind of vibe. Right. So I would say it's, it's mainly like the dailies one and the progression. Those I think are my, cause they're congruent in the level level here. Right. So you can say like, okay, I'm this level. Can I do this content? No. Why can't I do this content? What am I lacking here? What can I spend my time on and my money on? to make sure that I can get strong enough so that my level becomes my indicator of how strong I am. And then I can go here and do the things within my level. Those are like matching up. If you need to work on, if one of the things you need to work on is Legion, check exclamation mark Legion or links, boom, you have this one. Oh, you need to work on crit rate, exclamation mark crit, boom. Okay, that gives me crit rate sources, crit damage sources. What are those? Where can I, what are those? What can, where can I find those? What can I work on, right? Is it IED? Oh, okay, exclamation mark, IED. One video is explanation on what the fuck is IED? How does it work? How can you calculate it? What are the sources of IED? Boom, in terms of uh, opportunity cost, where can you look for IED? So this will have the familiars, for example, in here as well, right? And then if you're still puzzled and you just really don't know where to go, ask away in the chat. I'm here every day, so fire away, basically. Well, cool, man. Um, I'm probably going to have to get out of here. Yep. Uh, this was this was a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm still, I'm very excited because it feels like, yeah, there's there's a lot that I've kind of left on the table um, that mm -hmm. I already have access to. Yes. Plus, I get to burn that arc. <laughs> well, it does mean that you can make some really fast gains for very little input at this point because the work has already been done. You just have to capitalize on it now. Then you can right. combine that with the extra work on the bosses and just learn that you can your character is capable of much more than you that it might feel like it right now, and that'll set you up for the, you know, with a plan of how to make extra money. Your income is going to shoot up. Um, the bossing is going to be a lot easier. Now you have a much more powerful bargaining position as well for something like a guild, because if they say like, well, we have to expect you to do this and this, now you know what your character is actually capable of, and you can be like, oh, I can, I can do these things. And then you can get a lot more back from a guild as well. Right. Cool. Yeah, right. I, <laughs> I need to join a guild. It's, it's helpful. Yeah. And you have, if you have any questions, of course, you know, my chat is always open as well, but you know, if you have any questions, if you find a guild and there's like two other Lauras in there and they've already, you know, gone through exactly the same things that you're about to go through, then they might have some additional insight that can help you out way more, you know? But yeah, it helps. It helps to have access to people, access to information. I try to keep it, uh, yeah, I try to make it as available as possible. So, uh, use it as much as you deem necessary. Well, hey, I appreciate all the uh, all the help, man. Yeah, uh, you're I'm very welcome. Get out of here.
Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we've gone over time quite a bit, I think. So it's uh, <laughs> you do what you need to do. But um, yeah, as long as you have the general idea of like where the damage comes from, how to capitalize on that, and then just use uh, my resources whenever you want to. And uh, I wish you the best of luck on everything. Thanks, man. Have a good one. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Coolio. Coolio Dulio. All right. So, yeah, sometimes you could be pretty far in the game in terms of level, and then you can turn around and look at the, you know, look at the mess that is your <laughs> Legion grid and look at, um, and then realize that it's a mess. You can kind of just like pile on, you know, like you're with your hyper stats. You're like, oh, I have some hyper stats. I'll level this one up. I have some points. And then every single level, you don't really get enough points to make anything crazy. So you just make a little jumps. But then you get very far into the game. And then you look back. And even though your metrics aren't that bad, they could be a whole lot better. So sometimes you need to just take a step back, look at a system. How does it interact with other systems? How can I make it so that all the work I've already put into this account, into this character, actually gives me gains, right? What are the gains I already have? I just haven't clicked the right button. And sadly, sadly, maybe not, some things go automatically, right? You level up, you put in your AP, you put in your skill points. That's pretty direct, but some things you have to jump through an additional hoop, select the right link skills, level the right characters, put the right blocks in the Legion grid in the right position, level the right, correct hyper stats, and there has to be some thought behind it, interaction between the stats and priority of skills. So that's why I have all my resources. That's why I have my hyperstat one. That's why I have the Legion one. That's why I have all of the commands that I have. So if you saw anything here that's useful for you, use it. Uh, if you think something is wrong or outdated or it needs to be adjusted, let me know. We can talk about it. The discussion alone is very useful. Um, and it might be something that I'm already thinking about. I'm just not actively doing yet. Um, but it could also just be an interesting conversation in the chat as well. So all of these are available through my Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash Scarter. You can just go into the chat, use exclamation mark commands to get the full list. So you can see these, you can see this whole thing. Most of most of them, like 50, 50 of them, I think are like direct linked here, but some of them you have to use the command in the chat. Cause it's like, you know, a wall of text or it's something in there that is variable. And then I put it in the chat instead. Um, yeah, that's one thing. These sessions are paid sessions generally, but you can also request them with the channel points if you watch my stream and if you're subscribed over on Twitch, which is much cheaper than the session itself. Uh, or you can also leave a comment in on the YouTube video right now that you're watching saying that you would like to win and please inc include your Discord name. And at the end of the month, I draw two winners. So in about a week, I'm gonna draw two more winners for all the videos in June, all these sessions that I do and you might be one of the two lucky people who win. So if you're interested in that, please do that. Other than that, um, yeah, if you have any additional questions, find me live on stream. Otherwise, I'll thank you for watching the video and hopefully you'll watch the next one as well. Thanks, peace out, bye.